that we understand that practicing and keeping track of all of our practice time is integral to our development, I want us to kind of shift our mindset about the time we use to practice our instrument. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you and one of your friends has the same amount of time to practice your instrument, okay? But for some reason, your friend is advancing and getting a lot better at drumming than you are. And you guys both have the same amount of time to practice your instrument. What exactly is going on here? Now, you might say, well, he has better gear or, you know, he's just naturally talented. I don't think really any of those two things have anything to do with the amount of time you're allotted to practice your instrument. You see, gear helps you minute amounts. Maybe it'll push you creatively for a little bit of time, but then that's gonna wear off and then you're gonna be like, well, I'm just back into my own same habits. So what is it? Well, one thing I discovered is that your friend who is getting better at you on drums a lot quicker is practicing the stuff that you don't want to do. Well, you're probably thinking, well, what do you mean the stuff I don't want to do? It's the hard shit, man. It's, it's the stuff you don't want to practice. It's the repetitiveness. It's putting in the time. Your friend is doing all the boring exercises that you overlook just because you sit down at the drums and you play what you already know. That's not bad. We need to keep that creative flow going per se, but you don't really want to limit yourself creatively. You want to get out of your comfortable spot and practice the stuff that actually challenges you. That is the stuff that's going to make you better. So I think personally that is why per se, your friend is much better at the instrument with the same amount of time that you both have to get better. Okay, now that you got your practice log and we've kind of like touched on the mindset of how much time and how we use our time to practice, I wanna go over a couple like basic exercises that I actually do myself to isolate my weak foot. So you're gonna grab your drum key if you can find it. We always have a problem with that. And I know this sounds really basic, but on your double pedal, I want you to take off your right beater. So let's say you're a right foot leading drummer. Basically, you're putting your right foot on the downbeats. I want you to take that beater out, okay? Now, I want you to practice your drums without that beater. You don't need to do it for the whole week until the next lesson, but I want you to try it a few times and try and play the same beats you do with your right foot but instead you're limited to only using your left foot. The point of this is to, you know, kind of free yourself of relying on your strong limb and then you can actually isolate it and hear how much work it needs. And it's actually kind of embarrassing because you take that beater off, you play with your left one and you're like, ah, uh, yeah, okay, so that's, that's the problem. That is the issue at hand, the one that needs work. That's the left foot. If you're a left foot lead drummer, it's gonna be your right foot, so just change that around. You know, if you're, if you're jamming with your band and stuff, you're gonna need both beaters, but if you're on your own time, just take it out, try it out for half an hour here and there, and then, you know, just try and isolate. Is it the singles that are causing you trouble? Is it the doubles that are causing you trouble? Is it a triplet feel? You know, just go through your different note values and see exactly what it is that you need to work on on your weak foot. The point with this stuff is humility, right? Because Quite frankly, my left foot needs work too, so I don't want you to feel alone on this, and I don't want to like preach like I'm you know, something special or God's given gift or anything. I just want to pass on information and like some tips and tricks and stuff that I use to help get better. Okay, so we know our left or our weak limb needs work, but what do we do? What we do is focused repetition and consistency. Repeat it with me. Focused, repetition, and consistency. Okay, so for this week, on top of taking out the beater from your strong limb on your pedals, I want to provide you with an endurance exercise. And you're to do it as often as you can throughout the week because next week you're going to get another brand new lesson and you're going to have a lot to catch up on. So if you stay consistent with it and follow me through these series of videos, you'll have no problem. The first thing we need to do for this exercise is to set up our metronome. If you don't have a metronome, you could just go to Google and type in the web browser metronome, or there's lots of free apps too you can download on your phones. That shouldn't be an issue, there should be no excuse. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is take your metronome and then set it to a medium tempo. A medium tempo being maybe about, oh, let's say 70% of your fastest speed. Your fastest speed being, who knows, maybe 200, 220, 250. 
let's do 130 to 150. So when you're playing in 130, you're gonna play alternating 16th notes between your right and your left foot. And if you feel like it, instead of just isolating your feet, you can put a basic rock beat over top of it. Just play the downbeat of two and four on your snare and just play eighth notes on a ride cymbal or on your hats. Okay, but the point here is to play for a long period of time. So if you mess up, don't worry about it. Just keep going and then do your interval. So you're gonna start off playing for two minutes and then after the two minutes is done, you take a minute rest, all right? After you take your rest, you're gonna double the amount of time you played. You're gonna play four minutes and then you're gonna take a two minute rest. And then the next segment is gonna be six minutes, three minute rest, eight minutes, four minute rest. You get the idea. You can go for as long as you want until you burn out. Now you gotta be careful with this because the longer you play, the more you're gonna burn yourself out. So you wanna take this at a consistent tempo. You don't wanna cause any bodily harm to yourself or like any muscle strains or anything like that. So if, don't push yourself too hard. Remember to push yourself, but not too hard. Now I want you to follow along with me and I'll do the exercise along with you. 